Denise Robin from Lily Lane Decor and Design. Um, back with some more instructions on your DIY kit. So um, right now we're going to be doing the stenciling on a wood sign. So I have my vinyl stencil here. As you can see it's taped off so you guys can't actually see because of how the video works what's on here. I can see it um, when I'm this close to it, uh, but it's hard to see in the video. So there's my stencil. I have my completed sign. So in the other videos you'll see things like um, staining the frame, painting the background, all those sorts of steps have been covered. So make sure that you're looking for the right video um, for the step that you're at. So we're going to go ahead and do the stenciling. So with your popsicle stick, you can use a credit card, a ruler, really any straight edge. You're going to rub the whole stencil all over to make sure that the transfer tape is stuck to the vinyl. Um, weather can sometimes have an influence on the way vinyl behaves, so if it's very hot and humid, the vinyl can get more tricky to work with. Once I've done that, I'm going to flip it over. Um, vinyl can vary in color, so I'm going to, when I cut these, I cut whatever I've got on hand, really. Uh, so in this case, my backing paper is blue. It says Oracle all over it. Uh, that's what I'm peeling off, so I'm removing that. Unfortunately, in this case, both my vinyl and my transfer tape are white, so that makes it a little bit trickier for you at home to see. Anyways, I'm making sure that as I go through that I'm leaving all the vinyl stuck to the transfer tape. This is probably the trickiest step in the whole process of completing one of these stencil kits. Okay, so I'm peeling my transfer or my backing paper right back against itself. This helps to make sure that all my pieces stick to the transfer tape because my, the pressure of my own hand here is helping to make sure that those pieces stick. So I'm just going to go. This happens to be a design with a lot of text. So if you have a design with a lot of text, it's going to take you a while. If you have a single word or a larger silhouette type image, you might be able to do this quicker. So feel free to fast forward or pause the video as you need when you're completing your kit at home. And if you have not um, purchased the kit yet and you're interested in sort of some of the things that we have available, uh, we offer various wood products, so signs, planter boxes, blocks, all that kind of stuff, as well as um, stencils to go on fabric and we offer our DIY supplies as a full kit so you can get a kit with um, your base so that could be a sign blank or a clock face or whatever it is that you want uh, it could be a pillow or a shirt your stencil paint um, usually I throw in one of these little popsicle sticks uh, and some sponges which for some reason I don't have right here um, so next, now that my vinyl's all been peeled off, it is sticky on the back, so it's going to adhere to my sign. So I'm going to take it, flip it over, lay it on my sign. Whenever I cut these stencils, especially before the use in a kit, I always try to make sure to cut them so that they fit the base that they're going on. That way you can easily line them up, making sure that the design fits the piece that you want and that it goes on nice and straight. So again, once I've done that, I'm going to scrape the whole thing with my popsicle stick. I'm going to remove the transfer tape, so that's the stuff that says 3M all over it. It looks a little bit like masking tape. Some of them will come with clear transfer tape, some of them will come with this, um, this paper type masking tape that looks, um, it looks more like your typical masking tape rather than the clear. So again, I'm just folding that vinyl or that uh, transfer tape back against itself. I'm making sure to try to leave all the little bits stuck to my board. Okay, so if any of the insides of letters, like the insides of the A's or the E's stick to my tape, I just put them back down, press them down again, and keep going. If you're doing these at home and you want to keep and reuse the transfer tape, you can. 
um, especially if you are cutting your own designs or um, buying them without transfer tape on them. Uh, the purpose of the transfer tape is that it keeps all the insides of your letters all in place while you move your stencil from the backing paper to whatever you're putting it on. Um, and it also helps to hold the vinyl um, kind of still. Otherwise what happens is the vinyl, the vinyl is very thin and delicate and it will start to stretch and twist and makes it really hard to get it to lay down nicely. So just that, that transfer tape just gives it a little bit more substance. Center of P came up there, so we're just going to push it back down. Oops, there's another one. Another one. If you're having a really hard time with it, you can go back with your um, your straight edge and just rub the whole thing again. If you're finding that it really isn't sticky, for the most part, it, it is it is time consuming, but it shouldn't be a huge problem. Bit of time. And like I mentioned before, if, if it's taking you longer at home to do this, then by all means pause the video. Um, and if it's if you have a simpler design and it's taking you less time, then fast forward through all of this. I'm just going to grab myself a little sponge here. Um, so if you see me do these things when I'm working on orders, I'm often using a foam roller definitely way faster than the sponge um, but in the kits we're going to include the sponge just because that's what's practical to include in a small kit okay so that would be like a kit for a single item um, would just have a sponge included and then so once I've I've, um, I've moved on to this part I'm just going to dip my paint in a little or dip my paint dip my sponge in a little bit of paint dab it off of it and then dab that sponge on to my sign here. Um, less is more when you're working with the sponging the paint on when you're doing the actual stenciling. Um, if you put on a ton of paint all at once you're going to end up with bleeding so that's where the paint kind of escapes under the stencil makes your letters look blurry. I mean, especially when we're talking about these little teeny tiny letters here. And just go over the, the stencil until you like the coverage that you get. So sometimes you'll have to do the whole thing, let it dry, come back and do another coat. If you haven't ordered a kit from us yet, or if you want to see some of the designs that we have to offer, you can check out our Facebook page and go to the photo section. You'll see um, some albums that have um, various design options. We also do our own graphic design work. So if you have, a, if you have something that you want that you haven't seen yet um, in, our, in our design section, then let us know and we're happy to make up designs as well. And some people, when they're stenciling, they want really opaque letters. Some people like a little bit more of like a rustic or a, um, I often call it like a screen, like a vintage screen printed kind of a look, which is why I love the little foam rollers that I often use, is that they really give you that, um, that screen printy sort of a look. So that's all your personal preference. That's you get to control all of that when you do your kit. If you like that more opaque look, then do three or four thin coats of paint. You'll see that I kind of, I look back at where I've already been and I go back over a little bit if I think the paint isn't quite dark enough.
And the paints that um, that we have in these kits are quite quick drying, so it doesn't take very long at all before they're dry and you can go back over again. Especially since it's really warm out today, so that helps it to dry more quickly. So um, when you're working with these materials at home, weather does affect them. So if it's a, if it's a damp, cold day, it's going to take a lot longer for your paint and stains to dry than if it's a hot day. Okay, and if it's a humid day, that will affect their behavior as well. So once I've gone over my whole design, and I'm happy with the with the coverage that I have. I, I think it looks even, and um, you know it's the way that I like it. Then I can peel my stencil up. So when you're working with wood products, uh, the paints that we include, the majority of them, you won't have any issues. You can let your stencil dry, or you can peel it when it's wet, and you shouldn't have any issues either way. Um, the some acrylic paints, uh, what happens is you get a seal over the, over the stencil and when you peel the stencil up, uh, the paint peels with it. So if you're using an acrylic base or a latex based paint, I would suggest um, peeling it up as soon as you're happy with the coverage to prevent that paint from drying. Some of the metallics that we use have a tendency to, um, to do that, to form that kind of a film. So there we go, now we're done. And there's my stencil all peeled up. Um, and actually that one came off really nicely. Usually they don't come off all in one piece like that. Usually they rip in a million little bits. Um, people always ask me if they can reuse them. That one almost looked like you could. Um, anyways, I'm just going to go back with my knife, pick out all the little bits here. And once that's done, then that is the end. That's my completed sign. So there we go. That is, um, that's, that's how that looks. Okay, let me know if you have any questions or if there's anything that I can help with. Thank you so much.